In this video, we will see a Juniper MX router and a couple of Kuro smart wall units being used together to provide real-time DDoS mitigation. The traffic generation will be formed by a spirant, which will be sending the good and the DDoS traffic in. The MX will send that to the Kuro smart wall units using a pair of VRFs. The smart wall units will clean the traffic and send just the good traffic back to the MX, which will then send it back to the spirant. To verify that the DDoS traffic is mitigated and the good traffic is unharmed, we will be using traffic statistics from the MX, and we will also be using the SWA. This is the analytics platform that analyzes all the data coming from the smart walls. We will be using the CMS to configure specialized Berkeley packet filter rules to filter out some of the DDoS traffic. Taking a closer look at the MX configuration, you will see that the traffic coming in from the Spirant is placed into a VRF known as the Dirty VRF. This traffic is then sent to the smart walls. In this case, we're using ECMP, but you could have also used a lag. The smart walls will then clean the traffic, send it back to the same MX, this time on a different VRF. This VRF is what we normally call the clean VRF. That traffic can be sent anywhere at this point. In this case, we are sending it back to the spirant. It is important to remember that the Carrero smart walls are transparent devices. They never have any MAC addresses in line. They never have any IP addresses in line. It doesn't matter how you send them the traffic. It doesn't matter if the traffic is VLAN tagged, MPLS tagged, or plain. They act just like 10 gig fiber cables in this case with the one exception that the fiber cables clean the DDoS traffic. This is the Spirant we'll be using in the demonstration. It is sending 4000 PPS UDP traffic as the background good traffic. Later on it will be sending attack traffic. As you can see it is sending 4000 PPS to the MX and receiving 4000 PPS from the MX. On the MX, you'll see the interface stats of the traffic coming in from the Spirant, and you'll also see the traffic coming back from the two sets of smart walls. You will see the two individual port pairs that are sending to cluster 1 and cluster 2, and the traffic coming back from cluster 1 and cluster 2. That would be the scrub traffic from the smart walls. Here we'll take a look at the analytics. You'll see the 4000 PPS coming in from the Spirant and through the MX to the smart walls. The smart walls are taking a look at the traffic and seeing that it is actually made up of multiple flows created on the Spirant. You'll also see that the last minute blocked rate is zero because we have not started to send any attack traffic yet. This is the base condition as seen by analytics. Now taking a look back on the Spirant, we are going to introduce some attack traffic. We will start off with some UDP source port 19, otherwise known as a reflective charge and attack. When we launch this attack, it's a little hard to see how much traffic is being blocked by just looking at the Spirant counters. So what we're going to do next is take a look on the MX and see the PPS rates. On the MX, we will take a look and you can see that port 5 to 4 is receiving 5,000 PPS. That is due to the 4,000 good traffic and the 1,000 PPS bad traffic that we sent in. But you will also see on port 525, only 4,000 PPS is seen as the smart walls are blocking all the attack traffic automatically. Now if we come back to analytics, we can see the attack in progress. It is 1,000 PPS as expected. You can see uh, the amount of traffic blocked in red there. But you also can click on certain parts of the graph depending on what you want to look at. In this case, I want to take a look at the reflection attack, which we launched. If I click on it, it automatically brings me to the charts page. It automatically selects some of the most common things you want to see, in this case, top destination IP address, link utilization, and what rules are blocked. 
So we know it was charging, but if you still want to dig deeper into the rules, you can click on that and it brings you to the events page. In the events page, it will show you a time frame search of all the events that came in and their rate. And you also can take a look at any of the metrics of the attack, and you can also click on those for more information. We are going to stop the reflective charge in attack that is running on the Spirant and thus return the original base condition of just 4,000 PPS. When we check on the MX, you'll see that it only sees 4,000 PPS coming in, and of course 4,000 PPS going out as the smart walls are not blocking any of the good traffic. The same thing can be seen by looking at the analytics. You'll see 4,000 PPS and none being blocked. We are now going to log into the CMS, or the Carrero Management Server. The CMS is used to configure the smart walls. In this case, there is a flex rule that has already been configured. It is a pretty simple rule. It is just using the Berkeley packet filter syntax, which will match on IP, UDP, source port 777, and dust port 777. So far, this rule has not matched any traffic because the Spirant has not sent any traffic that would match this rule but in the next step, we will do so. On the Spirant, we are going to launch our UDP 777 attack. This attack is 1000 PPS, just like the charging attack we used. On the MX, you'll see the 5000 PPS coming in just like before, except this time the extra 1000 is a custom-made UDP attack instead of the reflective charging one. In analytics, when you first look at it, it looks very similar to the charge and attack. You see 1,000 PPS blocked, 5,000 PPS total. Up at the top, you may notice the alarm, but definitely down at the bottom, you will see that this time it's being blocked with a flex rule, not a reflective rule. Now, if you still don't know what's making up this attack, uh, you did not configure the actual rule and send the traffic from the spirant, you always can click on things in our charts to have them automatically drill down. In this case, it'll go to the charts page again, and it'll show you the top destination IPs, top rules blocked, just like before. This one, of course, is our flex rule. If you want to know more information about the flex rule, you can do what we did before and click on those, and it'll automatically load our events page. When the event page comes up, you'll see that it will do just like it did before. You can actually see both attacks in there now, uh, the second one being the most recent. And you'll see the two vectors side by side, one showing the 7777 and the other showing the port 19. You can click on any of those metrics you want and drill down to find out the exact vector you're looking for. In conclusion, you can see how you can use a Juniper MX router to redirect traffic to a set of Carrero smart walls to provide real-time, scalable DDoS mitigation with enhanced analytics and configuration policies.